oh, dudes and dudettes welcome back to the channel man sincerely appreciate you being here with me on today so what we're gonna do today is follow em's history and we're gonna find out how he got on american idol in the first place we're gonna get his whole backdrop and probably learn some things that we never knew before i'm sure you've probably already seen it but you haven't seen my reaction to it so let's get into it oh boy there he is yeah in order to really understand his success you have to understand his history and his background that all started right here in Kahuku. agreed let's do it lily is the one who suggested him sing monsters for his audition uh, i told him why don't you do monsters and he's like no i don't want to sing monsters i don't want to be sad i don't want to do it uh he specifically mentioned he didn't want to talk about rodney one of the producers um, just said it'll be nice to sing something that you know is different and he looked at me and i just i just looked at him i didn't even have to say anything <laughs> mama knows best monsters ian's audition struck a chord with people from around the world that's an understatement i find it incredibly interesting that he didn't want to perform this song he didn't want to sing he didn't want this stuff but just the loving energy of his mother being there for him allowed him to become who we know him as today i find it <laughs> divinely ordained if i'm being real he didn't want to do it how and how, how many scenarios do you know that god says do something and you actually want to do it you know what i'm saying this is this wow he didn't want to sing the song. He didn't want to be on American Idol. He didn't want to do none of this. He didn't even want to sing anymore because it reminded him of his father. And then the love of Lily allowed him to blossom into who we know him as. It's an absolutely tremendous story. He said he said it. And this, this piggybacks off of the Is It Rigged video that I did a couple weeks ago. He said that he didn't want to be a sob story. But as you know, the producers are going to do whatever they can to get that out because they know that America holds on to stuff like that and takes it, pulls on the heartstrings and all that. So they forced him pretty much to out of his shell. They, fo they forced him into the spotlight pretty much by asking him to do the, a different song. And then him making that eye contact with his mom. Mom already knew. Mom knew what song he should have sung the first time. But again, the only words I can come up with is divinely ordained and a, a, a spiritual, what would I, what line of law was called it? A spiritual moment. Uh, there's nothing else I can say about it other than it has to be that. September 1st, 2004. A star was born on the North Shore of Oahu. My name is Ian Thong, September 1st. And I'm from Kahuku, Hawaii. The youngest of five, Ian's passion for music started at a young age. Ian was always a singer. Like we used to tease him as a bathroom singer, you know, in the shower, everywhere. He'll sit there, play games, sing. We're watching movies, he's singing. It's like more like <laughs> annoying kind singing. <laughs> like just always singing and we would always be like, stop. So we kind of were pushing him to stop, not knowing that, you know, he was destined to sing. He couldn't, he couldn't hold it in. Wow, bro, that's that God-given talent right there. You, you just do it subconsciously. <laughs> wow. <laughs> the goof. We everyone loves. Put your hand down. <laughs> I started getting into it, but my grades suck, so I couldn't do any like tournaments. Y'all hear that? His grades sucked, so he couldn't play football. So all y'all aspiring people out there that y'all want to do music or y'all want to do football, get your grades right so you can do your sport. Now, luckily for him, that wasn't his his path, so it was just all part of the plan. But still, let that be a reminder to you. And also, your grades don't have to be good in order to sing. All right? There's many things that we can be drawing from this right now. When he started going to school and his teacher, um, Alison Faleolo, like, taught the whole class ukulele. And that's when he kind of picked it up. Dope. 
Uh-oh, Ian what's this music? Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, or Oh, ADHD. me too. But growing up, it was way worse. And um, I used to get in trouble a lot. I would get calls from the me office too. or from his teachers that he would be in school without... <laughs> Look at record. the cross-eyed. No pencil, <laughs> nothing to write with, but he would always have his guitar. <laughs> no school supplies, just a guitar. He's got his life supply. He got his supplies for life, his guitar. He don't need nothing else. <laughs> hey, when you see stuff like this, it always comes off as a rebel or somebody that needs to fall in line or something always like this. But I wonder how long it took them to realize that he was a natural born singer, that he couldn't even stop it. He didn't even recognize when he was doing it, but he was just always in training. This is wild to see all the dots connect. Hmm. Hmm. Let's pay, let's pay closer attention to our people. Let's pay closer attention to our to our brothers and sisters and our our, our classmates and all that stuff, man. There there could be potential just under underneath the surface. A lot every day because I would scold him for needing to try harder and things like that. But uh, just always came back to school the next day. I was so proud of him for doing that. With Miss Faliolo's encouragement. Playing the ukulele eventually became second nature. Oh, okay. I love it. And uh, I did my first talent show in fifth grade nice. with the ukulele, and I sang Words of Love. Partway into the year, he began. That boy singing rap. Online. When my husband found out he knew how to play the ukulele, he then that was around November. He bought, he went right away and bought him, you know, an expensive guitar, uh, ukulele, and he brought it home and hid it under our bed for his Christmas present. <laughs> wow. Look at the love and support. As soon as Papa Rodney found out that his son was into the ukulele, he went to the store and got him one, a very expensive one, and gave it to him for Christmas. How beautiful is that? Bruh, they noticed their son. They paid attention to their son. They nurtured their son into who we know him as today. I hope everybody's paying attention to this, to this family dynamic and how strong it is. But... Yeah, that's when we first started with him kind of, you know, singing with Rodney a lot. One of my favorite songs. <laughs> yeah, Ian's dad eventually bought him a cheap guitar. I think it was $99. And he's like, I want to see if you're serious about this, and if you if you are serious, I'm going to get you a better one. Once Ian proved his passion was serious, Rodney used his holiday paycheck to buy Ian this guitar. Wow. You know, I was kind of upset. How sweet. <laughs> Oh my goodness, he took his holiday paycheck and bought his son a guitar. An upgrade from the from the ukulele that he bought him. Which he noticed him like after he he would continue to just take it upon himself to practice and learn these cover songs. This is beautiful. The stewardship is just it's Oh man. And he said, Why are you upset? I'm investing in, in EM. This is EM's future. And I'd be like, Whatever, but you don't have to, you know, we got bills to pay. And I would stress out. And he'd be like, You stress too much. You know, we have to invest in the, in the kids. And I'm like, Yes, but you can invest in like a guitar that's 99 bucks. He's like, You want them to feel like they are worth something. So you, we have to, you know, spend that much money on it. What did I just say? What were my words just now? The stewardship. It's it's magnificent. Bruh. Wow. Wow. He invested in his son. He saw his potential and he poured into him before even knowing that he would be who he is today. 
he saw that he had a liking and a passion for something and he 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 took care of that flame he burned that flame brighter for his son and not only that but participated in it with him up until his passing what a tremendous man my goodness it's no wonder his son is such a beautiful person rodney got em his first job performing weekends at mike's Hooli chicken in kahuku mike would always come and tip me like 20 40 dollars and i'm like hey thank you mike in look at the smiles rodney got sick suffered a stroke and for about a year had to stop his work as an electrician Damn. we were drained financially and then he ended up going back to work and got dehydrated and had a heart attack. So right after that, um, we knew that we couldn't afford Hawaii anymore. Damn. It was hard. I miss my friends a lot. I remember sometimes I'll cry to my mom, like, why do we have to move? Why do we have no, I have no friends. And Washington is different. It was more like you stay indoors, like you don't really go. You know, in Hawaii, yeah, I'm like, I miss walking, just walking in the streets and just meeting my friends anywhere and just walk. Now it's like just sitting in the house. I just think, oh, you know, nothing's going to happen to mom and dad because they're going to live forever. That's when I realized, like, yo, it's not going to, they're not going to live forever. After Rodney got sick, Ian developed anxiety and had his first anxiety attack at the age of 16. Oh, wow. Feeling, like, like my heart starts racing and I don't know what to do. I can, he just sat there on the bed and he just seemed like he was hyperventilating. And he, oh. I can't breathe, I can't, you know. Like. Rodney skipped his dialysis that day to be with his son. Ian remembers a conversation he had with his dad about the struggles he was feeling inside. Tough, you know, he's a tough love kind of guy. And that day, where well, he took me out, and uh, he just uh, like said, "Son, it's okay. You know what I mean? It's okay to feel that way." And what a tremendous steward! Even though he was a tough love kind of guy, he still nurtured his son. He still was understanding. He still was was a good father a good coach oh wow wow he likes to talk about you know things with me and he talked about the fear of um being alone fear of me not coming home yeah. Ian, just message straight to you you never alone because i got you i am here with you for you on this earth if you ever come find me i got you Bruh, we could just hang and chill, bruh. We ain't even got to do it. We could just hang and chill. Bruh, you never going to be alone as long as you got me out here. Just know that my energy is out here for you, kid. Ian wasn't there in Washington when his dad died. He had come to Hawaii for Christmas. Oh, wow. Uh, Ian broke down. And right after crying for so long, he went into my sister's room who was dying of cancer and just played music because he knew that's why his dad Wanted. Wow, man. One more day with you. One more day. He's such a beautiful, sensitive soul, man. One more time. He's still a young and the way Ian just seemed like he didn't want to do anything at all. Like he didn't want to go to school. He didn't want to go to seminary. He didn't want to go to church. He didn't want. He was like, depressed. Just seemed like he didn't want to do anything. Ian got strep throat right before coming to Oahu for his top 26 performance. Well, we're going home and we're going to have our uh, little thing. We're going to do some. I don't know my voice is gone. I couldn't even talk. But when I talk, we like, like that. Now, one of the PAs kept giving me, uh, she like was helping me out. She got me honey. And just before the thing, I was just sucking honey the whole time on the packet. And right when I got there, I was like, I was like, man, I don't think I'm going to be able to say this. I was like, Hi guys, I was like, oh shoot, this the voice is back, baby. I was like, Yo, I'm ready, dog. Now that Ian's been through, wow, into wow, wow, bruh, he almost didn't perform at his very first concert, but but <laughs> there's so much stuff that's been working out for him, even though 
there's also so much stuff that feels like it's not working out for him. It's 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 insane. It's almost like this is gonna sound weird, but it's almost like Rodney was was there to help him get to where he is now, and that he had done his job, and that it was time to go home. That's what it's feeling like more and more as the story unravels, and to to see how there's so many things that they both were battling and battling as a family. But how it worked out almost in an unexpected, uh, unexpectedly smooth way, it's, it's just, you can't, you can't help but see God throughout this man's story. This is wow. Although he's been on the road for the past two months, Iam remains rooted. <laughs> Never forgetting where he comes from. Lily was just talking about how she fears that Ian might get swept up in all the peer pressure and how he might start changing and lose his Ian factor. But I don't see that as a possibility because if if the devil wanted to do that, like it would have been done by now. He's been through so much and 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 gone through so much that I feel like if he was going to be corrupted, it would have already happened in his adolescence, in his younger years. But now he's he's concrete in who he is he understands and i believe a lot of this has to do with rodney's teaching so it i don't i don't have that same fear at all and i it i don't feel like it's any different but because i feel like i care for him as part of my family i don't have that fear for him at all because again of rodney's teaching and the fact that she continues to have this conversation with him about staying humble and remembering who he is and for him to be performing the songs that he performed in American Idol, it shows that he is more grounded than than ever before, bringing those unknown to the world Hawaiian hits to the national stage. I feel like that exemplified his his humbleness and his roots. There are about 1,700 students that go to Decatur High School. You'd be hard pressed to find a student who doesn't know who Ian is. Mr. Popular but not even from trying to be popular, just from doing his passion and wanting to share that with people. He said that you could find Ian in the morning serenading people before school and also at the at the, the, the food truck serenading people while he's eating before school. It's like wherever he's going, he is exuding that artistry, that musicianship. It cannot be helped. So this leads me to say my takeaway from this is pay attention to those people in your life that are doing things almost ritualistically, almost relentlessly, just always doing that thing. That thing might be the thing that they're supposed to be doing. That's my, that's my, that's my takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> One of the first things that catches your eye is Ian's golden ticket that sits prominently displayed on the living room mantle. You'll also find his three dogs, Coco, Thor, and Bubbles. Coco, Ian's Thor, and Bubbles. I also think that he's still up until this point. I feel like he should have gotten the platinum ticket. I'm very curious to know who got the platinum ticket over him still. Still don't sit right with me. We have a lot of family here, Tongans and Samoans, but especially Tongans. I was always wondering why Seattle, because to my knowledge, Seattle's been the most expensive city for like almost, what, 20 years now. And if not, it's been been the most expensive city in America for a couple years. And that, that was my knowledge of Seattle. But then it makes sense that for them to move there because they had resources, they had support, they had family. So I was always wondering that. Seeing her son's potential, Lily signed Ian up two years ago for American Idol season 20. I think he went two rounds online and then he got cut and he's like, ah, I told you, you know, and then he got mad. Well, when I first tried out, what? I made it past the first online round before you go to the auditions. And my dad was going out and telling everyone, you know what I mean? Then I tried out again and I never made it. And, you know, I felt like almost like I kind of disappointed him. But Aww. mom wasn't ready to give up on Ian and Rodney's dream. Once again, signing Ian up to give it another go on American Idol. Mom, I'm not good enough. Everything was, I'm not good enough. I think he didn't want to get cut again. Wow. Wow. He's just a human, just like everybody else. And 
he was afraid of not being good enough. But look at where he is today. My goodness, this is absolutely mind boggling to think that it's almost it's almost as if he had no hand in the success that he's had now other than just being consistent in who he is, which is a singer, artist, musician. And Lily twice or three times went through the back door and and set him up, hooked him up, told him to audition, told him to continue to sing, told him all that she was there for him. And he failed the first time and she signed him up again without his knowledge. And he succeeded this time because he wanted to make his father proud because the first time he felt like he let him down by getting cut in the audition in the online audition section. Bruh, he's so remarkably human. That story is so relatable. And then he found success on his second second time around. Bro, you can't have a better story. You this this is the the underdog story. This is the come from behind victory, and for him to have it at such a young age again, I think it just shows the strength of his parents and the fortitude that they were able to build within this young man. Tremendous! Wow, the very song that he didn't want to sing, the very song that scared him is the one that catapulted him into success the one that he learned for his personal reasons between him and his father he went home and sang it to his dad it's the same song that put him into state fame and stardom it's often the things that we don't want to do that god has us to do to then result in something like this to whatever varying degree is in his will for the individual but it's often the things that you don't want to do that are what you need to do. That's insane. It's that's insane. But it's also beautiful. It's like it's like how far are you willing to go? Are you willing to do what you're not willing to do? That's how far you need to be in order to get this type of result. It's be, it's a beautiful scenario, beautiful story. And he didn't talk about it until the producer. I saw you just recently lost your father, and he was quiet for a while. You know, and he's like, I don't want to be a sob story. And she's like, it's not a sob story. You've come like three rounds online without us knowing anything. So that's obviously talent. She mentioned like, well, wouldn't you want, you know, people to know who inspired you? And I think that's what changed him. And although Rodney wasn't... (sighs) Ah, bringing honor and glory to his father. Oh, goodness. And ends up bringing honor and glory to our father in heaven. (laughs) It's just about putting that little spin, that little that little paradigm shift to allow you to do the thing. He it went from being a reason to hold him back to being the reason that he was able to do what he did. Again, along with the help of Lily, none of this would be possible without Lily. Let's not even take a, a second of credit away from Lily. You've been saying that you're doing it for dad, but if you're not gonna do it for yourself, you're not gonna go very far. You have to like do it for both of you. You know, Take dad along for the ride, but it's yours. Little wow. did he know, it would be the ride of his life. Wow. Yo, go Lily. Oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> Mom of the year. Goodness gracious. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wait, can I get a yes, sir? Yes, sir. <laughs> I love this boy. It feels like work or like, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, or school. It just feels like, but you're having more fun. Like, okay, yeah, that's not work or school. But, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Ellie! I told my friends like the other night my phone started ringing and I was like, is it Tom Gear calling me? And uh, everybody was like, <laughs> Oh, how the tables have turned. You got old school popular artists psyched to be called by EM Thong. Oh my goodness! I'm so happy. Jack was like 
pretty much fangirling over Eum. Hey, Eum, you make me look real cool to my kids right now. <laughs> Dope. And what I say? Anybody remember my quote from that video, the concert video that I did when he was when he was on stage? I think it was that exact scene. I was like, look old legends and new legends together on stage oh my goodness and he made it on the show itself you know what i mean and 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 the, what everything he's representing he look like the rock cousin and make anything happen holy moly holy moly <laughs> i remember that one uh, my husband loves him we loved him from day one we know he'll get number one everybody knew it took people a little bit longer than others for the reality to set in like for us we knew that he was going to win from his audition for others it wasn't until cool down for others it wasn't until uh don't let go it wasn't until a lot of things but eventually everybody came to realize and understand that E.M. Dongi was going to win. E.M. made history as the first person from Hawaii and first Pacific Islander to win American Idol. Yes, sir. Uh... And, and I felt just very lucky to be out there with him. E -O, e -O, e -O, e -O. You should have. E.M.'s now. The beauty of, of all of the story and his father and all of it coming together, it felt like he was healing and he was doing his father justice in that moment. It was like... And also healing the world. After winning American Idol, Ian single, I'll be seeing you reach number one on the iTunes charts. Yes, uh, my boy. You absolutely deserve it, King. It's an absolutely beautiful song. But no matter where he is, I am the American Idol. He'll always have that playful spirit <laughs> that is Ian Tongi. I just wanted to say, love you guys, and thanks for coming out and supporting. Yes, sir. Red yes, Raiders for life. Yes, sir. No show sure. hold each shout out to all my I just spit on the mic. Great. Shout out to all my family at home. All my friends. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> From all of us here at KITV4, congratulations, Ian. What an absolutely beautiful young man. What an awesome special. Shout out to CCAT for having that up and ready for us. Man. The ambassador of Aloha has really inspired the world. Anybody that's seen him has been inspired, has been healed, has been allowed to grieve. Even even after years of probably holding it inside, when you when you saw that that audition with him singing the cover of Monsters, it it did something to you as an individual, whether you wanted to admit it or not, or whether you were aware of it or not. It has made a tremendous impact on you as an individual. All right, cool little frozen beans, man. Hopefully, you learned some stuff about Ian that you didn't know. I I did. And the one thing, one takeaway that I got was he's got three dogs, and that his birthday is September first. First Hawaiian-born Pacific Islander as well as the first non-country singer in three years to win the competition. Shout out to Ian Tongi, shout out to Lily, shout out to Rodney, shout out to Manatao, shout out to the Tongi family, shout out to all of you. You've done a tremendous job. Shout out to Hawaii for having the culture to, to instill in this young man for him to come out and be received and bless the world. Thank each and every one of you. Thank you to my members, thank you to my donors. I appreciate y'all being here with me in this video. Jesus is my rock, my foundation of this thing, and y'all are the gasoline to help move this thing along and to pick up more steam and more subscribers and more love. And I appreciate it. I thank you for being here, and I pray I see you in the next video. Love.